morning. It's good to be here with you this morning on this rainy uh, Sunday morning. It's the, the uh, Sunday of Thanksgiving, and so it's good to be here with you on this uh, Thanksgiving Sunday. And um, I'm Marie Smith, and I'm the pastor here at Community United Methodist Church. And there's no better day than today to come and worship God with us. So if you're in the building, or if you're worshiping with us on Facebook, or if you're watching this later, um, I want you to hear, if you hear nothing else this morning, that you matter to God and you matter to us. It matters that you're here, and we are so grateful that you are connecting with us. And so we're, we're grateful for that. There's lots of things that are happening in the life of the church. It's, um, this is my favorite time of the year. It's when we start to gear up. Um, towards um, Christmas and the birth of Jesus, and so I'm excited about that. Um, so there's lots of ways for you to connect and to, to connect into our our life here at Community. So one of the ways that you can can, can do that is that you can um, fill out the the um, attendance pads, or if you're here worshiping with us online, if you would just tell us that you're here. So give us a thumbs up or put a um, a comment in the comment section anytime during worship. So if you're you're um, worshiping with us later, just let us know that you're worshiping with us. If you would take a few minutes to do that, um, let us know that you're you're here, um, and and use that um, those those ways of communication to tell us any of the things that you want to jump into. So let's just say that that um, one of our main ways that we connect with our congregation is through email. And so that's how we um, stay connected to one another. It's how we share information, um, things that are happening, more information, because it's a lot to try to get into this little bulletin, right? We would have to give you a book. Actually, we create kind of a book every week. It's called The Communicator. Now, if you don't have email and you're in the building, don't worry. We print off a few of those. And for those um, folks who don't have email, we send those out. I think we send about 10 of those out a week, maybe a few more, maybe a few less. I don't know. I don't count them. Um, and so if you would, um, if you want to be on that list, let us know. Set, you know, put, it, put your information down on that, con on that attendance pad and let us know. Or call us and let us know that you want one of those sent to you. Or you can pick one up as you leave here today. There are some copies called the communicator around that are, that are here. So let, just let us know that you want um, that information. We would love to be able to share that with you um, in a written format, kind of a printed format, I mean. So let us know that. Again, you can use the attendance pad to let us kind of communicate those, that information with us. Lots of other things that are happening in the life of the church. I hope I picked up the right form. Um, or the right bulletin that's highlighted for me. I have this lovely person who helps me figure out what I'm supposed to like announce, and I didn't fill out the right one. All right, here we go. Um, so we right today after worship today, we're going to have a a um, children's ministry dream meeting um, to help dream about what children's ministry might be and how we might reach um, other children for children's ministry. So if you'd like to dream a bigger dream for children's ministry, now. This could be anyone. It could be children, people who have children. It could be people who have ch grandchildren. We would love for you to come and join us at 1030. Um, so come and join us today in room 303 for that meeting. Um, again, we're going to have a parents' night out on December 4th from noon until 4. If you'd like to help with that, or if you know some children who would like to join us for that event, please um, look in the communicator. There's ways for you to, to sign up uh, for that. And then I'm really excited that on December 12th, it's all about music. For those of you who love music, yay! For those of you who know somebody who loves music, yay! Here's what you need to do. Invite them to church that Sunday. It's an easy invitation because we have two opportunities for you to invite somebody to church. The first is on, um, during our 9 o'clock worship, we're going to have our music cantata. We're excited about that. Uh, our choirs have been working hard at it. Yay, I'm excited about that. It's going to be a wonderful thing. So at 9 o'clock, we're going to have our cantata. So join us. We're going to, we're going to have it online so that people can watch it, watch it online. So if you say, oh, wait, my, I know somebody who would like to watch that and invite them to watch it online if they're out of state. I saw um, actually Ken Green, you did this this week. You invited people to come to worship online. 
He posted it on his Facebook and then said, hey, come and join us online if you're out of state. Yay for Ken Green. It was a great way to invite somebody to come to worship. You can do that same thing for the cantata. We would love for you to invite somebody if you go, wait, I, 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 I could invite my, my grandchildren or my children who live out of state who would like to do that or, or remember cantatas from before. So that's a way to do that. Again, December 12th. Then in the evening at 6.30, this, all of this area will be transformed and Midnight Clear is coming back. Yay! I can't wait to hear them. Um, it's kind of like a Trans-Siberian Orchestra-ish is what I can imagine it to be like. I've watched a little bit of them. Some people have sent me some videos of it and I'm super excited about it. So that's going to be in the evening. And so we're going to invite, the, we've invited the community at um, all of the community of Circleville to come in. It's our opportunity to say, hey, would you like to come to a concert? And it's a way for people who are kind of feeling like, wait, I don't, I don't know if I, if I understand this church thing to bring them in and invite them into this space in a non-threatening sort of way. That will not be online because we don't have all of the rights to all of that. So just know that we're going to do that just in the building. So invite people to come here at 630. We would love for them to join us here. Um, if you want more information or if you want a brochure for that, we'll have some handouts for that um, in, in the next coming up weeks for you to say, hey, here, here's a way to an invitation for that. Also, in the next couple weeks, well, actually in the next week, you're going to get a postcard. It's another way for you to invite people to that event. Wow, I'm talking very fast. Whew, you can tell I've been away and I've been very excited. All right. And if you notice, we have some things up here. And he, I wish I would have caught the picture because I came out of my office at about 830. And all of a sudden, I saw there was like a lineup. I was like, what's happening at the altar? Is like people praying at the altar already? What? Nope. The angels were out. And so people were already up here picking the angels. Yay! So the angels are out for you to pick. I think, Melissa, how many people? Where I saw Melissa come in. How many um, angels do we have this year? That was way too many numbers for me. Over 300 angels, 17 families, and 68 children. Wow, church, we get to show up in an amazing way. That means you have to take more than one angel. Yay, and I saw you all already doing that. I, was so, I wish I could have taken a picture of you. Like There was like swarms of people up here. I was like, look at the church being the church. Yay! So come up and grab your angels. And lots of them. I want you to take all, all of them to be gone. All right, and so we need to have them back by, what's the date? They need to be, have their presence back by December 12th? No. The 11th. The 11th. All right. And so we can't wait for that. Um, so you'll be able to do Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all of that kind of shopping um, for all of these children and families. Yay! I'm so excited about that. So um, that's exciting for us to be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus for, um, for 68 children and 17 families all across Pickaway County and beyond. Just imagine what we get to do. Um, this is not in my notes, but um, I didn't understand what this could do. So I had a friend of mine who um, I, I worked with years and years ago, and I, we did this as a work project once before angels became a thing. This was a hundred years ago. And um, we as a staff did it at a, a facility that I worked for. And she said, I said, Brenda, why are you doing this? Because she went overboard. Like she like, she took like, you know, five kids and, and she was like, oh, because my family, there were four of us and we never had Christmas ever. And then one year, the nuns brought us Christmas. And for the first time in my whole life, I got a Christmas present. I opened it up, and I got socks. My own socks. Socks. She got tube socks. Because somebody did an angel project. And so, 
when you think that picking up an, uh, a boy size age 10 who wants boots a size 4, and you think, oh wait, that has a lasting impact. And today, Brenda continues to share that message. She takes her children to church because somebody picked up an angel and got tube socks for a little girl from a Christmas angel project back in the 80s. So it's important, and it takes a lasting effect. Well, let's stand and sing th um, Thanksgiving because we are blessed beyond measure. Let us sing our opening hymn. Please take your hymnal and turn to page 694. We'll sing the first three verses, Come, Ye Thankful People, Come. Eternal God, we commit our cares to you this morning and praise you for the blessings that surround us. As we prepare for the season of Thanksgiving, we thank you for the splendor of your creation, for the wonder of life and the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care that surrounds us on all sides. We thank you for our successes and joys but also for the disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his words and the example of his life, for his resurrection and for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, may we at all times and all places, not just at this season of Thanksgiving, give thanks to you. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 41, verses 46 through 49. Joseph was 37 years old when he entered into the service of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food that was produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it 
in the cities. In each city, he put a food grown in the fields surrounding it in storehouses. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand in the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. Our act of praise this morning is in your Faith We Sing book, page 2036, Give Thanks. Won't you stand with me? We'd like to invite the children to come down for children's moment. Joe Port has some things to share with you. Wow, I am so glad you are here today. I am really glad you are here today. You know, this week we're going to celebrate a big holiday, aren't we? Which one? Thanksgiving, right? Thursday's Thanksgiving. You know, this will be the 400th anniversary of the first Thanksgiving that the Pilgrims did, 1621. Yep, it is, trust me. I looked it up, okay? And they celebrated for three days. I don't think I could eat that much for three days. But anyway, I got to thinking about Thanksgiving one day a year. And I was wondering, you know, every year we do this because I found a list that we made one year of the things we're thankful for. So I think we'll make a quick list again this year. So what are we thankful for? Anybody? Yeah. Family always makes the list. What else? Nothing else? Friends. What else? Yeah. Church. What else? Yeah. Your pets? I'm thinking Grady was in the first one, family, right? Not pets. Okay. Anybody else? 
All right, so we made this list, family, friends, church, pets, and that's got a lot of uh, kind of a similar ring every year when we do this. And I was thinking about a Bible study or a Bible lesson that, that might say something about thanks. And I found one in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, when there were 10 men came to Jesus and they had leprosy. And it was back then, it was a really serious, serious disease. And a lot of people didn't make it, okay? They didn't recover from it. And, and so if you got it, it was bad. So the, the story in the children's Bible here, as Jesus was traveling, he met 10 lepers. Their bodies were covered with sores. The lepers shouted, Jesus, please heal us. All right, you can see they're all bandaged up. And Jesus said, go, show yourselves to the priests in the temple. Then they left, and while they were walking away, something amazing happened. All of them were healed. All right, so while they were walking back to the temple to show the priests, they were all healed. All their sores went away. They took their bandages off. So only one man came back to tell Jesus thanks. Only one man out of ten. The other nine, they just went on about their business. And Jesus wondered. He said, gee, didn't I heal ten of them? Where'd they go? And I think his feelings were hurt. And I think sometimes we do the same thing. We've got a great list here. Family, friends, church. Well, is your family only your family on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day? No. Are your friends only friends on Thanksgiving Day? No. The church, your pets? No, you have them all the time, don't you? And a lot of times we ask God for things when we pray. Sometimes we get what we pray for. Do we stop and say, thanks, God? Do we go back and say, thank you? Sometimes I don't think we do. So rather than Thanksgiving on Thursday, the third Thursday, fourth Thursday in November, instead of that, why don't we make Thanksgiving every day and think about all the things, family, pets, church, friends, all of it, and we think about those things and be thankful every day, not just Thanksgiving Day, okay? So let's have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that all good things come from you. You have blessed us with so much, not only the list we have, but, but so many more things. Lord, help us to be truly thankful, not just Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, but every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. And friends, we have a few um, <clears throat> added people to our prayer list this morning. Um, and so if you will take a minute and add to your prayer list, um, if you'll see Wendy Pence, Karen Daniels, um, Norma, Norma um, Mogan, um, and then I just want to give thanks for Jessica um, Carey's sister for her birthday and then um, Chloe Lynn, um, her a great granddaughter this morning. Um, and then also, I just want to highlight this morning, um, Fred Kennedy is going to be in Riverside. He's being transported to Riverside this morning for um, some complications. And so uh, Linda asked that we pray for him this morning in worship. Um, and so we want to continue to pray for all of the people on our, our um, prayer list, but in particular, um, those folks. And so as we prepare for our hearts, if we would turn to um, 452, verse 1, my faith looks up to thee.
Let us pray. Jesus, you are ever present with us. And you call us to be your presence, your body into the world. But so often we get caught up being one part of your body. And we lose sight of the overarching mission that you set before us. We fracture into pieces and we go our separate ways, forgetting that we need each other to be whole. Lord, you have given us your covenant to be our guide, but we turn our backs on what we see as rules and restrictions, fearful that we will not live up to your expectations to love extravagantly. Help us to see with new eyes, to hear with ears of our heart and liberating spirit of a covenant that strengthens and revives and enables us to be and do all that you call us to be and do. O God of love and justice, discipline and peace, help us to be faithful witnesses of your love and unity. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, now we um, invite you to give back to God a portion of what God's given to us. It's a way that we honor God in our giving. And so, friends, um, won't you give God your best?
doxology found on page 94 of your hymnal. and gracious God, we ask that you would use these, our gifts, our tithes and offering to expand your kingdom here on earth, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hear these words from 1 Corinthians 13, or 12, sorry. Twenty-seven through thirty-one. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church first of all the apostles second prophets, third teachers, now miracles, then gifts of healing and helping of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues, 
Are all apostles, all prophets, are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And yet I will show you the most excellent way. And let us pray. Good and glorious God, open our hearts so that we might hear what you need us to hear. Lord, do that through me or in spite of me, but in every case, Lord, hide me behind your cross. Amen. Well, this Thanksgiving week, we wrap up our thankful gifts. Our gifts are things that we truly are given and things to be thankful for. I have to be honest, sometimes I think, oh, I'm not thankful for my gifts. Sometimes they're a curse because, oh, I wish I could just stop talking because sometimes my, my husband sometimes wishes that too. <laughs> Amen, Todd? He gives a thumbs up because he does not talk like I do right? Now, we in the last few weeks have talked about um, our talents, our gifts. We have talked about what we are good at, and we've talked about how when we use our talents, the kingdom, um, how when we don't use our talents, sorry, the kingdom of God misses out, that there's a void, there's this missing place at the table. There's like an empty chair there, because we didn't say yes. And today, we're going to talk about how when we use our gifts, our spiritual gifts, to help others, something shifts, something happens. Those spiritual gifts that we discovered last week, and I hope that that you took your um, spiritual gift, that, you, that maybe you already know your spiritual gifts, but maybe you took that spiritual gift inventory and you were surprised by, wait, I didn't know I had the gift of helps, or I was, wait, I was in uh, an exhortation? Oh, wait, that means you're a, yay, you cheer others on. You figured out your unique special spiritual gift. So that as we talk about how you can use your spiritual gift to make a lasting impact on others. You see, my friend Brenda that I talked about earlier, one of her spiritual gifts is helping others. She's a physical therapist and she helps others every day, but she helps others in her community by sharing her gifts with the world. This morning, we find Joseph... And he's had quite a, a journey so far. I loved how that, you know, he's, we hear him, that the author in Genesis says he was 30 years old. He started when he, we first found him when he was 17. It's a bit of a jump that we make to chapter 41. Now, last week we left Potiphar's house. And actually, when he left Potiphar's house, he was, he was thrown out. So if you want to read that um, story. He was thrown out because of a lie, and he was thrown out and thrown into, does anybody remember the story? Where was he thrown out? Not, not you, Xander. Shh. <laughs> anybody else? Remember where he was thrown? Why, um, where he was thrown into? No, he was, yes, he was thrown from, not initially, yes, he was thrown into a well initially, but from Potiphar's house, where was he thrown into? Yeah, I heard it. Jail, that's right. He was thrown into jail. He was thrown into jail. And so it must have felt like he was at the end of his rope. So first he gets thrown into a well because he uses his gifts. And then he gets thrown into jail because he uses his gifts. You can just imagine. If you've ever felt like you were at the end of your rope, like everything that you do feels like, wait, what? Maybe you can identify with Joseph. Now here he's in prison. He's doing time. And he has these two inmates that tell him about their dreams. And he can't help it. He can't help but use his gifts. These gifts that God has given him. And he interprets their dreams. 
Because that's what happens, right? We can't help but use our God-given talents to help those around us. Those things that God has put inside of us that we have to share with the world. John Wesley, our founder, he couldn't help it. He had to use his God-given talents. God had anointed him as a preacher, a leader. People kept telling him, John, stop doing that. Please stop. The church told him to stop. People told him to stop. He hit rock bottom so often that I, I feel like his feet, you know, should have been like bruised up all the time. He got chased out of the Americas. He found himself wandering around. Even on his way back from the Americas, he thought, oh my gosh, if I die on this trip home, will I actually make it to heaven? When he was in in college, he preached and led people into small group ministry, holding people accountable and irritating everybody around him. He would go and preach in the middle of fields and hope somebody would show up. And sometimes there would be one person there. Then he would go to churches and hundreds of people, thousands even, would show up to hear him preach. But he didn't ma it didn't matter if one person heard or a thousand because it wasn't about the numbers of people. It was about this gift. He would preach an, in bars full of people and in streets with just one. Because he was using his gifts, he couldn't help but do it. He expanded the kingdom of God. Charles Wesley, his brother, and he... created a movement that many say prevented England from going into a deep depression because of the movement called Methodism. God used them. Let's just be clear here. He irritated everybody that he ever came in contact with. I mean, he was an agitator of all people. The Church of England wanted him to stop. Like, please stop doing it. They wouldn't even give him a parish. That's why he said, the whole world is my parish. It was because nobody would give him a church. That's how irritating he was. John Wesley was given an ultimatum in the Americas. You can either leave now, or you can leave on a ship in handcuffs. Which will it be? I mean, he irritated people. They were he and his brother were prickly people. Do you, do you know people like that? These were not the people you would have wanted to come to Thanksgiving, right? And yet, these are our founding fathers of the Methodist Church. These are the people that God gave these amazing gifts that they couldn't help but preach and teach and write lyrics to amazing songs and hymns that are, are our founding things, our theology is based on this are, these are people who used their gifts and started a movement that caught on like wildfire god used them because they were open to the holy spirit that would move and shape them they weren't stuck they continued to move they were shaped by their their gifts They weren't stuck. Now, Paul talks about in this gospel or in this, this epistle lesson about this list of, well, the apostle, the teacher, the preacher, the prophet, the healer. And then he goes on to say, but what I really want you to hear is there's this list of things that you can do. And you all think that those are the important things. The message version says it this way. But it's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's church is a complete body and it's not gigantic, unidimensional part. It's not all apostle, not all prophet, not all miracle worker, not all healer, not all prayer in tongues, not all interpreter of tongues. And yet some of you keep competing for so-called important parts. But now I want to lay it all far better, lay out a far better way for you. He's telling them, I've got a better way because we keep thinking that there's these gifts that are by far better. See, John Wesley, 
people kept saying, you got to do it our way. And he kept thinking, no, God's put these other gifts inside of me. That I see the world differently than the church, the established church had said, these are the way we want you to do it. It's why they wouldn't give him a church, because they thought, you're going to burn it down. And so, Paul says, but I know a far better way. He goes on in, in 1 Corinthians 13. We know this verse, don't we? We hear it at weddings. I read it at my wedding. Maybe you read it at yours. It's what? The love chapter. It's the love chapter where we talk about that love is. Love is kind and compassionate. We take it out of context, but Paul is saying that when we work together, all of those gifts, the ones that we can see and the ones that we can't see, work together for the body of Christ. That love pulls us together when our gifts come together as one then the body works together well but when one comes out of place well we know this when when we have stepped on something when when one part of our body doesn't quite work well what happens we notice don't we we notice when one one thing doesn't quite fit right when something's out of whack well, that's what happens with the body of Christ. That's what Paul's saying, that it doesn't matter. I know a far better way for you, and that way is love, which brings us back to Joseph. You see, he's landed himself in prison, and every step of the way, he's learned when he was in the pit in the cistern, when he was in the pit in prison, that he has to do things God's way, and God's way is love. And so when he's in prison and he interprets the dreams, it's not for his own well-being. It's for the people. It's because he cares for the people. He loves others enough that he wants to share this God-given gift with others. Even if it puts him in harm's way. Even if it makes others go, wait. Because I can't imagine that if I was in Pharaoh's prison it would be very good actually the text says I, I didn't i didn't expand upon this very much but the text says that that when they call when pharaoh called for him because somehow pharaoh has this dream that he couldn't interpret and so one of the people that um, works in pharaoh's inner circle remembers that there was this guy this hebrew guy aka joseph that knew how to interpret dreams and so they they call him up and it's so bad in the prison that they had to like get him new clothes like they had to like clean him up can you imagine how bad it must have been in the prison how inhumane it must have been and so lo and behold here he is but he never stopped using his gifts in prison. He continued to put others before himself. He continued to love others extravagantly. Tell God loves us, right? Extravagantly, overwhelmingly. And so he finds himself at the foot of the most powerful man that he's ever seen. Can you imagine this moment? And suddenly the Pharaoh says, I've had this dream. Can you interpret it? And he says, yes, but this is not my gift. This is God's gift. God is using me to help you. This work is not mine. It's God's. And Pharaoh acknowledges it. Pharaoh acknowledges God. And for the first time in a while, Pharaoh has a good night's rest because he understands his dream. And God blesses the region. So here we get Joseph, who uses his gift. He saves Egypt, and eventually Joseph saves the whole tribe of Israel. And we, we know this tribe of Israel. It's this little band of nomads 
the ancestors to Jesus. Joseph helped his people by using his gift, by, by not turning his back on these God-given talents. He could have, right? Maybe I would have. I would have said, no, I'm not. You, that, those, that dream stuff, that got me in trouble. I'm going to shut my mouth, keep my head down, and just keep moving. But that is not what he did. That's not what John Wesley did. That is not what we are called to do as God followers. When we said yes to Jesus, that means that we say yes. I'm going to use these things that, that you've put inside of me. I'm going to say yes to that. And so I ask you, what are you saying yes to? How are you using your gifts for the kingdom of God? How are you using your gifts to help others? Because our gifts are not just for ourselves. They are to help others to expand the kingdom of God. And, and let me be very clear once again. Sometimes we help within the four walls of the church, and sometimes we help outside. Sometimes it looks very traditional, like helping here, up here. And sometimes it means that means being a liturgist or, or singing in the choir or the bells or helping in the nursery or, or teaching Sunday school. Very traditional ways that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. And sometimes it means taking an angel. Sometimes it means serving food on a Sunday night at Community Life. Or it might be that we work in the schools and we read to kids. It might mean that we do something like we're a Girl Scout leader or we coach soccer. We do all of those kinds of things. When we say yes to Jesus, how is it that you might say yes? I, I'll do that. This week we gave you a ministry opportunity booklet, a brochure that gives you an opportunity to say yes. And in that brochure, wait, I put it here. I'm going to invite you to say, how might you jump in to the life of the church here? One of the things that I've, we found when we were doing the, the um, um, all of the cottage meetings were that, that we don't know how. We, we'd like to serve, but there's not some opportunities, ways for us to say yes to that. And so, yes, you can call the office, but how, we don't know, like, what's the commitment? How do we say yes? What are some of the things that we need? And so now we've given you an opportunity to do that. This is the first kind of go at it that we've had in a while. And so these are just the, the places that we know that we have some spots that are needed. This will be expanded, let's be clear. Like, for example, there's a, new, there's a couple new ministries in here. We have something called Congregational Care Ministry. We had that ministry a while ago, and we're starting it back up. It can be as little as sending cards to people who are shut in and, and are in the hospital or have just been under the weather, maybe people who are on our prayer list. Or it could be as much as going and visiting people in the hospital, going to visit people who haven't been here in a while because they've been sick or ill or it can be as little or as much. You'll be trained. You'll be part of a group of people who are doing that. It's a whole new team. Now, we also have something really exciting. I hope that you've been, um, you read in the communicator this week, we have a, a new team of people that have, we've done the corner closet. We have a, a building where we're going to offer um, free clothing to people who need it. Now, we're just starting that process of what does that look like and how are we going to how are we going to staff that? What kind of servant, um, servants are we going to need for that? And so you're going to find that information out in the next couple of weeks. So we weren't ready to put that in this booklet quite yet, but we will. And so we'll need people to sort clothing and to help people shop and, and to, to bring in, to, to do all kinds of things. And so maybe that's what you, you'd like to do. Maybe that's not your... That's not your cup of tea, but you could answer phones in the office. 
whatever that might be, everybody can say yes. Everybody can say, wait, I, there's something that God has put in my heart. Maybe it's working with your hands. I think about Larry Harris, who's done all the work at the corner closet. You know, he's like, he's like I, you know what, I, I'm, not a, I'm not your guy when it comes to like doing other stuff, but I can swing a hammer. I can dig a ditch. I can, I can paint. Well, maybe not painting. He did tell me he wasn't going to paint anything, right, Larry? No painting for Larry. So what is it that you can, what's your sweet spot? What's that place that you say, this is my thing. I want to do that. I'm going to invite you, though, to think about that, to pray about that. And then inside of this is a, is a return form that says, this is my ministry area of interest. I want you to fill it out. I want to do this. Maybe it's not listed in here, but you know that that's a thing. Like, hey, I'm, I'm interested in helping in, I don't know, whatever that might be. I want you to write it on this paper. Maybe you're already serving in a ministry area. Maybe you're already driving the van for, for Sunday nights. Write that on there that you're already currently serving in that area. Because this, just like we turn in our, our financial pledges every year, that you're going to get a letter in the mail this week for, I'm your new pastor. I'm about, you know, six weeks behind on everything. Next year, I promise it'll be better. Just like we financially pledge, I want us to financially think about how are we serving? Because it's just as important, isn't it? When we think about our spiritual growth, our spiritual growth comes in, in serving, in giving, in our devotional time, all of those ways. And again, that comes inside and outside the church. And so I invite you to, to pray about this. And then in the next couple of weeks, we're going to honor God as we, as we commit them before God for the coming year. Well, friends, I invite you to, to celebrate the wholeness that we get when we say yes. Well, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the way that you have connected us together as the body of Christ that when we say yes, when we love extravagantly the way that Joseph loved, even in spite of all of the setbacks that he experienced, when we love extravagantly like Jesus did, when we love, help us to serve each other, our neighbors and our community in ways that honor you, Lord, open our hearts so that we might have a heartbeat that, that beats like yours. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't you take your United Methodist hymnal and turn to page 87. We'll sing the first three verses. What gift can we bring? Why don't you stand with me?
Friends, you have been called and anointed. You have been strengthened and enlightened. You have become one body in Christ. Now go and spread joy in word and deed into the world. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to have a seat as we listen to the postlude. Um, 